Spring is well underway here in Yorkshire and so if you're anything like me one of the greatest things to look forward to is new potatoes. However one of the things that I've learned over the years is that I really don't like growing them in ground and for quite a number of reasons. One of which is the pesky little pest called a slug and that's because it rains an awful lot here where I live and so I end up with a lot of damage on them. Also because we have a lot of other pests that can get into our soil as well as quite a few diseases that can also cause issues for us here in the UK. And so what I started doing was I started growing my potatoes in pots and it made it an awful lot easier for me for a lot of other reasons including the fact that I've got quite a lot of debilitating illnesses and so when it comes to harvesting it's an awful lot easier for me to have my potatoes in pots rather than in the ground because it's an awful lot of work. You know we have to start off gathering our potatoes and there are two different types depending what time of year we want to harvest and what these potatoes actually are. Now there are specific reasons for growing them like we do and these potatoes here which are a second early variety called Charlotte are a prime example for that because potatoes are a part of the nightshade family and so like tomatoes they are either a determinant which means that they put on their fruits or tubers which is what a potato is in a very particular fashion. Now a determinate with a tomato means that they put their fruit on all at once. Indeterminate means that they grow upwards continuously and they put their fruits on in stages or trusses. Now potatoes do a similar thing but underground and so with what we call primarily new potatoes or early season potatoes, these little darling balls of delight, these grow out their tubers in one single stage and a single layer. And so we don't need to earth them up, but because they grow them quite close to the surface, we do need to mulch them to prevent them doing this, going green, which is the chlorophyll. And that's no good for us, it actually makes us ill. But this tiny little thing is actually a Maris Piper and this is what we call a late. These are indeterminates and so these we bury deeper in a trench and once they get to the surface we earth them up. And so the plant has to keep growing upwards and these will form their tubers in multiple layers thus giving us a bigger crop that takes longer to produce and usually they would also give us a larger tuber. Now as you can see these have all got quite healthy sprouts on them because I've been doing what's commonly called chitting. In fact this one is even trying to send leaves out. So another question that often gets asked is can I use store-bought potatoes? Well these are store-bought potatoes because these have been in my cupboard and I haven't used them specifically for this to show you what to do. And this is another reason why I wouldn't want to put these in ground because store-bought potatoes are not designed for us to actually put them in the ground. They're not seed potatoes that have been chosen to make sure that they're disease free. And here on this Maris Piper you can see this blemish. Now that can be a form of what's called common scab which is caused by a fungus that gets into the potato early on in its development which is in the soil. Now I wouldn't want to put that into my beds because my beds might have it anyway but what if they don't? Whereas if it's in a container it doesn't matter and here again you can see these blemishes. It doesn't affect the store storability, <laughs> can't get my words out, storability of the potato as such they just look ugly, but you're going to peel them anyway, or mostly, you know, 
you don't have to because a lot of nutrients are in there but if you've got that you're not going to want to eat that and so you're going to end up peeling it so with these I'm not I'm not going to be using that one I just wanted to use it as an example so that's a Maris Piper but the Maris Pipers as indeterminate are my favorite so with these Charlottes these are a second early they take slightly longer than others but the first earlies we've got an awful lot to choose from here in the UK and so when it comes to choosing varieties of our earlies and second earlies a lot of the favorites here in the UK are Pentland Javelin, Kestrel, Anya, Jersey Royal which actually unless it's grown in Jersey has to be called International Kidney and then these wonderful Charlottes which are a waxier type of salad potato and I really like these. The other thing to take into consideration is if you watched a previous video of mine you'll have seen me talk about days to maturity and so the days to maturity on these potatoes are usually 65 to 70 days but because of how much effort the indeterminate plants have to put in these are usually about a 90 to 120 days to maturity and some of our favorites of these are the Maris Piper, the King Edwards, Nicola and the Rooster which is a red. There are a lot of others but I'm not going to waste time going into all of those but mostly if it's a potato that you'd use in the winter for mashing then that's usually an indeterminate. So then how do we grow these? Well, if you're going to choose a bucket, I usually grow in these 42 litre buckets. My son's just drilled holes in the bottom of them. And I treat these as no dig. And so I'm going to have to go and put my hand down into these, remove some of the compost. And then potatoes are quite greedy. They like a lot of food. So I'm going to put compost. So I also like to use this particular form of organic pelleted fertilizer because it has organic chelates in it and if you use one that's got inorganic chelates then the problem with that is that uh, some of them lock out calcium and so when it comes to growing your things like tomatoes and cucurbits that is a cause of blossom end rot and so we don't want that in any of our plants. So here I have these pots which I've had for quite a long time and I've never actually used and when I came to get them they've been sat outside I've got four of them and they've been sat out there for quite a while and each one of them was full of water up to the line of this and if I just tip it over you can see just how deep these are to where the holes are so I'm thinking whatever I put in them I'm going to have to be exceptionally careful because obviously that's going to fill with water and I'm going to have to put something in there find something that will go in there I have actually got some little stones that I can fill that with which would make this then exceptionally heavy but I'm, I'm just using this as an example because I do use the 42 litre buckets but these are relatively cheap to buy so I was, I'm just using it as an example but for these you'd actually just fill it halfway full you can put two potatoes in here if you were doing it in ground you'd probably give them a little bit more space but what I'm thinking is if one of them happens to rot out then you've got one in there at least and then cover them now as the potatoes start to form later on you'll mulch them so that because when they form close to the surface you don't want them going green you need to protect them so mulching is a really good thing even if it's just with a bit more compost over the top now the other thing that I like to do with my pots uh, and I've spoken about this on Instagram is that when I go to harvest I like to do what's called it's called fertiling it's a real word but it just means gently moving the compost and taking the potatoes that have already formed because sometimes if you take out the plant all in one go what you'll realize is, is that there's tiny little nodes on the roots and they're the unformed potatoes but then the other ones around it are huge and so you've lost forming potatoes so I leave them some plants will form flowers and then others won't 
I take my flowers off. I don't allow the plants to form flowers because that tells the plant that it's done its job, whether it's a determinant or not. So I take them off and that makes my plants last longer. It's what I've found has worked for me over the years. And then I gently move the compost around take out the potatoes already as I want them and leave the rest of them in the pots for as long as possible. Now the one thing that you do have to watch for is blight because like tomatoes, potatoes do suffer with blight and here in the UK late blight is one thing that's going to come in on the wind and once it starts it's something that I particularly have to watch for because I'm in a high blight area. So I'm looking for that all of the time. Early blight is a fungus that's in the soil and so they're two different things but late blight comes in on the wind so once that starts you want to get your potatoes out of the ground as quickly as possible same as you want your tomatoes off the plant as quickly as possible and get them protected now what you can do if you are gardening on a budget and you want to get more and spread them out say you are putting them in the ground because you've got a lot of space or you've got a lot of buckets cut these in half now and let them heal and dry over where the cut is and then I mean you could even get three out of this because you can see there's a sprout there there's one there and then there's these ones here and so you can technically get three potatoes out of that or even more actually if you're careful because the one thing about potatoes is they're very tenacious and so what I've had when I've grown in buckets before and this is another reason why I don't like growing in my beds is because you can think you've got every single last potato out of there and then the next year or two years later you'll get a plant sprout up and I've had that when my son and I did the raised beds we actually moved the containers from where they were and we used the compost out of them and put them into one of the bigger raised beds so that we could put new compost in, into the buckets. And we went through them because they'd had potatoes in them, put the compost onto a tarpaulin, went through them, thought we'd got every last potato out of them. And I'm not kidding, two years later, I got potatoes coming up in my raised bed where there'd never been potatoes before. So they are quite naughty. They will try and get everywhere. And I think virtually every person that's ever took over an allotment has had free potatoes from whoever's been there before. So yeah, they're a great crop to have. Growing new potatoes and having them fresh out of the ground is something that is just completely and utterly different from buying them from the shop. Having them with fresh peas and bacon is just wonderful. And so, you know, I really do encourage people to try it, even if it's just once, you know, go, go for it. Because um, it is amazing to have that. And so I've got a light that's running out and deciding that it's not going to play ball. So I'm going to end this here. I hope you'll give this a try and let me know how you get on. And if you've got a different method that you use, instead of doing them in buckets or in ground, because I've grown them in bags too. And, you know, these things are, are wonderful instead of having them taking up space in your beds when you've got limited area. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you do. Thanks for being here and watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.